Today I'm going to be going over my Chinese carbon frame, my Els Falaf Pro 2022 disc. I'm going to be looking at the headset, the bottom bracket, I'm going to measure it all, see if it is all okay and see if it's up to a good quality. I don't see many of these videos on Western brands, I do see quite a few on Chinese carbon frames, I guess that's because people are still a little unsure. So hopefully in this video it maybe put your mind at ease a little bit or you'll learn something along the way. So let's get started and take a peek. Now, first things first, let's look at the paint job. Now, you would expect maybe on these frames that the paint job isn't as good as maybe you would expect. It could be somewhere where you could kind of skimp a little bit. Now, from my experience so far, looking over this frame, the paint job is really, really good. You can start with the fact that it's a custom paint job and I chose all the colors and I chose the sort of two sections. So you've got a different section here. And yeah, the, the whole paint job was decided. Also got my name on it. Um, that was included in the price as well. So for the 900, well, it's around 800 pounds, you get your custom paint job. You can pretty much do any color. They've got a range of colors. Um, and you can get two tone like this. Um, this is a chameleon paint. So as you can see in the sort of varying light, it changes color. So you've got your sort of golds and your browns and your greens all here and your red and your black here. My main thought process was where this sort of join is that it might not be as good. Now you can feel a slight lip if you like, um, but nothing major. So we're looking, looking good there. And we've got the same down here. So we've got all the way down here everything's blown around it's windy today hopefully the sounds all good for you guys and girls so that's all good the underside as well looking good i mean the quality for me is pretty sharp on the paint job i'm trying to get nice close up so you can really see you know if there's any imperfections it's their logo at the front but yeah overall i would give the paint like honestly a 10 out of 10 and these little imperfections, these little marks, I mean, to be honest, you can see around here maybe, um, you'll never probably see that because of the crank, but it's not quite circular. But again, minor detail. What's it like on the other side? So yeah, that one's a little bit sharper, more circular. Um, but yeah, after riding this for a few hundred miles, a few thousand miles, it, you know, it's gonna have little marks and scratches and imperfections. So for me, I don't actually mind too much if there was, which I can't see any anyway, so we're looking all good in here. But yeah, so that is a paint job, guys and girls. Honestly, it looks looks good to me. Maybe a slight bit there. I mean, again, very minor detail, but trying to show you guys and girls absolutely everything. The paint job on the forks as well is top notch. I mean, very similar to the frame, to be honest. In, in fact, pretty much exactly the same. You can maybe see around here like you could argue it could be a little bit neater but i'm i really am just trying to pick stuff out of thin area to be honest maybe a touch there you can see a little bit of of white let me just put that down you see what that actually is so is that just a mark yeah i think that's just something on there okay so that's just come off so that's all good again that would have only been minor so so far I am super pleased with this Els Falaf 2022 carbon frame. Next up, we've got the bottom bracket. Now this is what come with the frame. So we've got a BB86. So we've got 86.5 millimeters. So that's from here to here. And then we also have the actual shell uh, diameter. So that should be 41 millimeters essentially. So I believe it's 86.5 in total looking online. Um, and that's what come on this bottom bracket. So I assume that's what it should be. So hopefully it's 86.5 and these will be 41. I'm not gonna be using this. Now this is a ceramic bottom bracket that came with it. Now, one, I don't want ceramic bearings because the lifespan I don't believe is that great. And two, I, I don't know, I just wanna get a new one that I can probably trust a little bit better. Like this bike is gonna be used as with all my bikes. I'm not just gonna put it on the wall. So I want it to be robust and, and sort of stand the test of time. I am gonna go for a bottom bracket the same as this though. I'm not quite sure on the name. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments where it twists together, maybe a twist fit instead of a press fit. 
Now, BB86, you can get a bearing press and push them in, or you can get ones like this that screw together. You put a tool that goes on these sort of, on the outside here and the same this side, and then you just screw it together in tight. Now, this is only because I've had a nightmare with press fit before. So that's what I'm gonna go for. Now let's measure this. Okay, so let's chuck this on so we can see there what we got. I'm gonna have to flip it upside down. 86.5, exactly. No, 86.6. 86 86.5 let's go around a little bit 86.6 we're on there up here let's have a look just check if i've got it right i'm just touching the frame here i don't want to so come down a bit 87 are we no 86.6 just had to press it in Okay, so I mean that's that's not too bad, is it? There's 86.4, so we're pretty good on on this front, to be honest. Be more than happy with that. I'm sure it'll all be fine. So now let's take a look at the left-hand cup. So we want the smaller one. So let's chuck that in. What have we got? 40.7. So bear in mind this should be 41. So that's good. 40.7 again. It's quite hard to get an accurate read. Like there, we're 40.8 there, so 40.8. Let's go on the diag as well, because you want this to be a perfect circle, so your bottom bracket goes in nicely. So 40.9, 40.8. So overall, not bad. They're all within a few millimeters, so that is perfect. We have flipped the bike round and we are on to the other side. So let's crack on and see what we got. 40.8, 40.3, let me do that again just to check, 40.8, it's very easy to do this inaccurately, so there, 40.9 40 there, with 40.9 again, comes out at 40.8, so where I'm bringing it out we lose like a couple here normally, so it's around the 41 every time so overall i'm happy with the bottom bracket i'll get a nice new one to go in there we'll install that soon hopefully next up let's talk about the derailleurs and the drive chain now you can see here we have the brazon type front derailleur now brazon is like this where <coughs> you're essentially going to mount on to this bit here you've got clamp mount which is where a clamp goes around the frame obviously clamp mounts you need a circular frame so normally aero like these have the braze on now this is fully di2 compatible this frame i've not used di2 before but we've got this here so i assume that might be something to do with it now at the back we have just rear derailleur hanger here now everything looks pretty straight because that's one thing i i always look at is how straight these derailleur hangers are now look in there i mean by eye you can tell me if that's that's wonky or not i mean it looks straight to me and in our box of bits as well we also got a spare one so i'm pretty pleased with that because you never know what you're going to hit just want to talk quickly about cable routed now if if you've routed cables through a frame and you're not a mechanic it is a bit of a pain if you don't have all the tools now i'm not sure if this is standard on all frames but these are already routed these plastic tubes are just through here i'm pretty sure they're just used as a guide i'm not sure if like the gear cable should go through there anyone let me know in the comments down below if, if that's actually used to put the the gear in a cable through um but that goes through the frame and you can see we've got one that comes out here got a little bit of tape in it so it doesn't go back through the frame so that's the front derailleur cable the front gear and then we've got down here this one is going to be the rear brake cable that's going to go to the rear caliper here and then we've got finally at the back the rear derailleur cable so the rear gears so that's going to come out here now it is handy to have these routed already i'm not sure exactly how to set it up so leave a comment down below do help me out because i'm going to be putting this all together myself this is a self-build chinese carbon bike i did notice as well inside if we go in let's put the camera lens right in you can see there that is the front derailleur cable is actually routed through this part you can see it coming out the back there so you've got it comes in here into this little section and then it comes back out here which is what you want so it doesn't rub on the bottom bracket so you can see that in there just about now let's take a look at the headset now we're looking pretty good just on initial inspection if i just pop in there you can see the nice carbon layup if we look from underneath as well 
We're all looking relatively good in there. Now, a headset does come with the bike. Now, it's just a, an Elf sort of generic headset. We've got a little spacer on the outside there. I'm assuming that's for the integrated stem, one of the, the spacers, the final one maybe. Now we've got this, which is a top, top nut, a stem bolt. That I think is actually for the seat, I believe. Um, that wasn't in there. Um, this, I don't actually know what it is. So if you do know what it is, comment down below. I'm assuming it's going somewhere on some bearings of sorts. Um, it was inside the, the bear, it was inside the headset pack, so interesting. Right, this one I'm guessing is a top cap, like sort of some sort of preload, essentially. Um, again, I'll work it all out. Now these are the bearings themselves. Now, sizing wise, on the website it says uh, one and one eighth inch bearing. So you can see here, can you see that? H869, 52 by eight and a 45 degree angle. And these are both exactly the same. I've checked them both over. These need to seat the 52 mil um, bearing both of them so I'm going to go ahead and check this now with the vernier caliper and just make sure that they are actually around 52 or slightly bigger I assume not too sure to get a good fit we'll actually try them in there why not so let's take a look at the top one first again we need to go inside so we've got 51.9 exactly 52 so pretty much spot on there 52.1 let's rotate 52.2 that's reading so 52.2 let's go at a couple of angles as well 52.3 and finally 52.2 and how does this one fit in let's go straight in so want to pop it in nice and straight so there you go, you can see it fits in like a glove, nice and smooth as well. So I'll probably use these. Um, let me know if I should get some different ones, any of you mechanics or people with a keen eye. Maybe I should upgrade them, but they seem pretty smooth to me. Um, let's check the bottom one now. Let's have a look. So bottom one, we've got 50.6 there. So maybe that's going to be a little bit tighter. Let's rotate. 49 can't really see I just need to check I'm getting it right okay so 51.8 there 51.8 again 52.2 okay so more variation on that one I mean you can see there are some sort of marks some bits and bobs but let's chuck in the bearing and see how it is to be honest because that is the main thing so yeah, it's a little touch tighter, but I mean, that's gone straight in, to be honest. So straight in there, you can see that that fits. There is a little mark on that bearing, though. Let's try and get that out. You can see there is a slight mark on that bearing just here. I mean, don't know if that's normal, but yeah, you can you can see it there just here. So not sure. Maybe I should get new bearings. Maybe these might not be the best. I have no idea, peeps. It's worth a try, isn't it? I shouldn't knock them before I've actually tried them. So, but yeah. Mark. so overall they are looking pretty decent the headset bearings fit which is the main thing so on to the next next up the seat tube this is always a little area of concern for me because they're not a circular fit and they don't have a clamp right older bikes they had a traditional circular seat tube and a, a circular clamp you clamp that up it pulls it tight it's not going anywhere with these they're always angled and shaped to have a narrower frame to get your sort of aero profile. So you can see there, it's not circular obviously. So that means a seat tube, one, you can only buy the seat tube from the company if anything goes wrong. Two, it has to be a good fit. If it's not a good fit, your seat can slip and obviously go down. Now, let me show you what come in the box because it's quite interesting. Now we've got this first and foremost, sandpaper, and I thought, what is this for? But when you look at that, that is for the seat tube you can see the sort of design on there that is that is for that right and what it's saying is it's like sandpaper or such let me just get it out quick so you can see but it's basically 3m paper that's slightly tacky maybe that's like i don't know like a i want to say like a 300 grit or something like that quite a fine grit now it's saying to stick that peel the back off from what i can see and stick it in the frame so that's what it wants me to do so that's an interesting way to make sure something doesn't move. So that come with it, that was in, in the main box. Tube itself, so 
first of all, big win for having measurements. Some of them don't have measurements, which is a pain. So minimum insert. And you can see there, we've got this sort of matte color, which I really like as well against the frame. Um, and then we've got just the, the main clamp up there for the actual seat itself. So pretty stylish. If you want, if design is your thing and you want your seat tube to look nice, this isn't a bad looking seat tube. Um, we've also got grip on here. So you can see that's kind of rough. Um, and it's the same on the front, which I like. So they obviously know that it's a potential for it to slip. So they've they've got basically this grippy stuff on. So let's have a look. So if I put that in, I mean, that's not bad as it is anyway. That goes on to this. Not too bad. Slide that on. And that's going to go into here. And this should slide in. There you go. And we'll do that up. And then that's gonna, as you do that up, that's gonna grip the seat and lock it in nice and tight. So the part that you've all been waiting for, how much does the frame weigh? Let's have a look. We've got 860 grams. So 860, you can see there, that is for the frame. Now I must admit, it feels super, super light, which I'm pretty chuffed with, to be honest. Although I'm not too fussed with the weight. Um, let me lose some weight on my waistline first but you can really tell i mean it just literally weighs nothing to be honest 860 grams not even a kilogram i mean it's nuts really um i'm really looking forward to getting it built up so if you do want to see it all built up do subscribe and comment and help me out um it will help the channel grow and will help me fund um this chinese carbon road bike build i'm going to keep the through axle in there as well just so we have something to actually loop around the forks are 425 so we have 860 plus 425 is 1285 and bear in mind that does have the through axle on as well so overall a super light frame not gonna lie i'm buzzing with that hey we've got some sort of some sort of card which is warranty card okay so we've got produce oh wicked we've got the frame id or product id date of purchase warranty period five year global warranty 